So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast for Saturday, April 2nd, 2022. Finally got my taxes done. What a relief. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are all caught up or close to is that deadline's coming up in just a couple weeks. Anyway, with markets of as volatile as they've been, we've got plenty of opportunities. And one thing that I want to keep you uh, in touch with is the best patterns and strategies to capitalize on our current market. And we've had a pullback in oil, so I'm short oil. I'm long SCO. Ditto with natural gas. I'm long KOLD. And I think the market's going to roll back down again. So personally, I bought some more inverses like SQQ and UVXY uh, yesterday. Uh, toward the close because i think the market may well do a pullback you can see the s p has been down then up then down then up then down then up way up and then starting to go back down a quick question i know it's just uh nobody knows but do you think the market's more likely to keep going up and this is just a little pullback and we'll keep rallying up which is possible or do you think the market's going to go down if you would type in the chat box up or down i'll be curious to see wow a huge turnout today Good to see y'all here. Uh, up or down? What do you think? I could be wrong. I've been wrong often. I've been right often too. The key is when you're wrong, be wrong really cheap and small. When you're right, you say down, up, down, up, up, down, down, <laughs> down, down, up, down, 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 up. It's all over the map. So that's what makes for good trades, right? We've got some people on both sides of it. Here's a quick tip. Good point, Wendy, about the hammer. Yeah, you're right. We did have a kind of little hammer in the pullback here. But what what's the kind of the the X-ray into the market, the secret vision behind the scenes of the market? What do you want to look at? Is always what? The VIX, right? So you always want to pay attention to the VIX and our volatility index is way down near 20, right? Now, what happens whenever the VIX comes down from on high down to 20? 100% of the time, what has happened recently? We're pattern day and swing traders, are we not? 100% of the time, when the VIX has come from on high, from the 30s or 31, or lately it's up at 37, 38, whenever the VIX has dropped all the way down here to under the SMAs, especially under the 200 SMA, that's the, the Calhoun oversold indicator. When the VIX drops from on high to the under the 200 SMA, that's, you may have heard talking heads talk about various oscillators, my Calhoun VIX oscillator, or at least how I trade, is when the VIX drops under 20, it's oversold, and volatility is likely to return back. So it's kind of like a coiled spring. The VIX always goes up and down. A-shaped, you buy low, sell high. Hence my trade in UVXY. Now, something I was telling my live room members about, risk-reward. And that's something that I learned a lot about from my colleague, Steve Nissen, who's brilliant. Uh, I look for small risk with large reward potential. And this sets up, now there's no long signals in this from a candlestick or Western technical standpoint, so it's strictly speculative, but at least we're near support, right? So the risk in this trade is lower support near 11. So I put on, I'm in, I think around 400 shares, so not a lot, but 400 shares, it's a bit, maybe five grand worth of this. Uh, 11 is key support. That would be the stop out level if the UVXY gets down there. And the upside potential is up near, not double my money, but at least up here near the 19 or so. I always sell right under 20. So the trade, the risk is $2 and the reward is uh, about $6. So this may be a good pivot play. And what has been running up? Oil's been up except lately, right? We take a look at some of our oil stocks, whether it's Occidental Petroleum, Halliburton, they're all looking really good. And it started to pull back a little bit off the earlier highs, but oil's been strong. So ever the contrarian, I bought a little bit of short crude ETF down here, SCL, because it's come down from way, way much higher. You get, it had been significantly higher, now it's all the way down here. So the risk on a bottom fish trade, when you're bottom fishing, by the way, this is a market in which you do want to swing trade bottom fish and buy reversals. It's a volatility, it's a high volatility market. So you buy support, sell resistance. Uh, you don't get these nice defined buy high, sell higher trends in this market. Am I right? We get A's, the letter A and the letter V all the time. So you got to trade. It's a trader's market. So you have to uh, buy low, sell high, right? You can buy high and sell higher once you've bought low and sold high initially or bought, bought low and held it as it's moved higher. 
Uh, but for now, we want to look for buying low sell high. So again, the risk on this is down to 450. Neg negligible risk. If you look at the long term on this or just the one year, you can see short could have been 24 and earlier. What's really appealing about some of these charts is they've been so much higher and now they're down near lows. It's still catch a falling knife. So not a good technical setup yet, but speculative longs and these do make sense at least a little bit from at least from my way of thinking. If we look at some of the cannabis stocks too, with the Morac passing. So I'm short the market, I'm short oil and natural gas, and I'm long cannabis. And that's all folks, that's that's it. Uh, now the, the Moore Act attempt number two, uh, it didn't pass, it didn't get through Congress last year. Uh, it passed Senate on Friday. Uh, I was surprised we didn't get, well, we got an anticipatory, anticipatory run up last week. And I've been in them long since uh, late last week. So I'm doing well, uh, they're starting to bounce. Cannabis stocks, uh, they, they passed the a key passage, the marijuana, I can't remember what the ORE stands for. It's a lot of words, but cannabis legalization is one step forward with the Senate passing decriminalization on Friday. It still has to get through the Senate. I'm sorry, it still has to get through Congress and get through the president. So it's still a long shot, but we do have a big pickup in our cannabis stock. So for that reason, you might want to pay attention to Tilray canopy growth. Not see. Let's see. What's the other one? Sundial. Right here's my cannabis portfolio. So those are all those are all the major pot stocks. There's also a cannabis ETF called MJ. Right, no no surprise there. Anyway, there's a huge pivot potential in these right now because there's there's going to continue. Kind of say. The truth of the matter is there's going to be a lot more speculative interest, speculative interest. Odds are it's not going to pass. It's not going to get legalized. That's the it's a long shot for cannabis to get decrimmed at the federal level. But there's going to be enough speculative in, from a trader standpoint for you and I, the how I make money standpoint. There's going to be enough speculative interest that maybe it'll pass. There'll be a lot of buying likely throughout next week and the week after but especially next week next week's going to be a green week for cannabis stocks so we do want to light it up and see if we can get lungs and things like mj chronos they all have nice little check mark pivot patterns it's good long play so that's my tip of the week for you guys long cannabis next week and we'll revisit this next saturday and see how much money you could have made if you'd actually listened to me anyway just saying sundials up my two favorites, though, of course, are Canopy Growth and Tilray. They both have outstanding pivot patterns. So that's where I think the money's going to be next week is cannabis stocks. I don't think oil and energy, they're kind of going to, they're going to be somewhat choppy because the world situation is still uncertain. And in that uncertainty, we're not going to get a lot of new people, new buying pressure in our oil instruments like Oxy, Halliburton, and Conoco. But they're all spectacular charts. But I feel like we're kind of late to the party for those, so I don't want to chase up here. I don't think I don't think we're getting a good price on these guys if we're buying something like Halliburton way up here. Okay. And another quick tip: remember what I teach you guys. Don't buy nines. Anything with a nine in it, like this, thirty-nine. That's why it stalled out for all of last week, right? Halliburton was unable to pierce the forty. That's another tip that I've published for decades. Never buy nines. Nine. As if it were in German. Anyway, nine. You never buy nine, right? So uh, I'll get, it'd be along over 40, but not right here. Here's a sell zone in the nine. So again, we, you get in above a decade, I would say buy 31, sell 39. Buy 41, sell 49. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, pass the House, but not the Senate yet. So thanks, Jim. Okay, yeah. I don't follow politics as closely as I should, but it passed something. It's just the first of several hurdles and it's unlikely it'll continue to pass. But you know, cannabis is a, what, an $8 billion industry here in Colorado. It's interesting, the, the two, the tax income from the two recreational, the two, there's only two recreational stores somewhere in the south end of town in Manitou Springs. The tax income from those two stores outdid all the other hundreds of small businesses combined. So it's a, 
a big green business. Anyway, speculative interest is likely to spark up in that. What else do we have? I bought a little bit of both DraftKings and SPCE earlier just a couple of weeks ago because I thought they would bounce. And they're starting to. So for speculative bounces, the other two that I like are Virgin Galactic, SPCE, the ticker. And the other one is DraftKings, DKNG, of which I remember one of the talking heads was had an interest in. Booyah. So we'll see if it goes up. What else do we have? This LGVN was a really good runner for us on Thursday. Yesterday was just okay because it kind of chopped around, but Thursday was big for LGVN. HUSN, another run. I traded this one, the Clovis Oncology. Clovis Onc is good because it's good for a swing as well. And I, I bought some for a swing trade too because it's one of those bottom fishers, has lots of upside, blah, blah, blah. So. It came from higher and it's starting to bounce. So CLVS, Clovis Oncology might be a good play moving forward as well. What I like is the sustained strength. I went from two to 260. I'm not gonna buy it up here, but if it gets over three, I'm gonna start scaling in. So that's another chart to keep on the radar as well. One of you had mentioned LabU. I like one strategy that I teach in the live room is called pair trading. And the way that it works is this. Before I explain that, let me, Mention I did just this morning decide to go ahead and offer a new swing trading session coming up next Thursday that I call Breakout Profits. And it's so this is a little commercial message. Uh, and it's worth it. It's a well, it's a great deal. For just 97, you get a, a one hour and a half swing trading session coming up uh, this coming Thursday, plus all of April in the live room. So for just 97, uh, you get $97. That's it for 100. There's no upsells, no extras, anything like that. It's a great value and I get so many people I make things up on volume I, I charge very little for my training uh, but I have so many customers that makes it worthwhile for all of us so it's a good deal and plus I'm a real trader I did over 41 million dollars worth of order flow last year in my fidelity account that's got to put me up at the top of the educators list out there very few of the educators actually even trade they're PowerPoint disc jockeys who do a lot of internet marketing. I mostly spend my life trading uh, and teaching traders, but mostly I trade. So uh, I'm a very busy guy. Anyway, that's my 1099 from last year. I just got it in, what was it, February uh, from Fidelity. That's tax return proof. I did $41 million worth of trades last year. The point, the reason I bring that up is that I have more experience than any other educator in making live trades that I've seen. Ask to see tax return proof from any other educator out there in terms of their 1099. You'll see a lot of BS, a lot of hemming and hawing, a lot of, well, I, I can't show you that. Of course you can. There's no law against showing you 1099. And in fact, I think it should be a requirement for anybody in the trading education industry should be able to show tax return proof on demand that they're actually really trading. Most of them are bullshitters. Most of them don't trade. Most of them pretend they talk. You lose money when you follow people who don't actually have the real experience like I do. I have more experience live day in swing trading than anyone I've seen in this entire industry. And I have the tax return proof to back it up. Ask any of my competitors for that, for similar proof. You'll get excuses and BS. You won't see any facts or proof. That's vitally important. How many of you would agree? People who purport to teach something should have proof, government proof or whatever, whatever official proof uh, that they actually do what they say they're going to do. Not doing that would be kind of like trying to learn how to golf from some guy who won't hit the ball in front of you, right? And, well, I publish some articles and I do internet marketing webinars on golf and blah, blah, blah. Uh, whenever I hire a golf pro, he better be able to and hit a 300 yard down the, down the fairway, right? Off the tee. I want to see what I'm, I'm paying to, to learn from. So learning from people that actually have proof that they actually trade, I think might help you turn things around. Just saying. Uh, there's a lot of BSers. Almost the entire industry is con artists and bullshitters. I'm a Fortune 500 former consultant, UCLA grad, statistician for Ford Motor Company, and I've got the credentials and the proof that I really trade to back it up. Just saying. All right. 
anyway, so for the low, low price of just 97, I can't believe I'm still selling training education after 20 odd years, but hey, it, it covers my stops, right? That's a joke. It's I run the business, it covers my stop losses. Anyway, break out or fake out, uh, discover the best setups in, in an hour, actually 90 minutes you get, uh, plus, uh, you know, the rest of April, which is a lot of time. The reason I'm telling you guys this, I decided to go and launch it now is because we're at the start of April. So it makes a really good deal for you. If you can register now, you'll get access to the live room starting Monday for the whole month for just $97 plus this, plus the download of this. So it's at trademastery.com forward slash breakout profits. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Now the secret about pair trading is as follows. Oh, by the way, I'm going to stop the recording. Before I divulge the secret, I'm going to stop the recording. Only those of you who are here live are going to be able to get to it. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Let's see more. Stop recording.